Hi guys, um, I know it's been a while since I posted. Uh, I've been really busy with work and no, there's no project on the bench today. But I have been involved in a really interesting project, kind of actually leading it up a little bit that's actually for work. And I really wanted to just kind of touch base with it because I thought it was really interesting and there's a lot of cool aspects about it. And I'm really, to be honest, I'm going to brag a little bit in that it's something that I designed and it worked amazing and I just thought I'd want to kind of run with it and uh, show some of the testing there'll be a video of it actually being used later on and uh, just kind of show you the SolidWorks model and go through it a little bit and also just kind of uh, touch base that I haven't forgotten about the channel and uh, I do have a lot of little projects that I want to work on. I have tried filming a few projects that were utter failures. Uh, I might put a couple little bitty uh, clips here and there uh, just to kind of show y'all just smoke coming out of boards and things like that. I mean they were they were pretty bad. But I am going to try to start posting a little bit more and I just wanted to kind of use this uh, go, you know showing a little show and tell on this project as kind of a way to break back into this and hopefully get a video posted out of it so I'm gonna go to my screencast and we'll look at this uh, this project alright so here we actually have the model of the uh, prototype we actually built just thought I'd kinda go through it and give give you a little bit of a rundown on how it operates just so whenever you do see the video you know what's happening you can't really see it too well in the video so this will kind of help give a better idea but this is a drop hook and it is designed to do something that is normally frowned upon whenever you are lifting anything and that means it just drops it on the ground and it does that by pretty simply it just opens up which uh, my assembly may not be flexible here. No, they should go ahead and open up for me. There we go. Okay, SolidWorks is just a little slow on it. It's also mad at me now. It wants to rebuild because it doesn't like whenever I hinge it open and closed. But you can kind of see if we hide this shackle here. that it's just a really simple little principle of clamping and it uses this little hydraulic ram here to actually apply pressure and hold it closed and it's it's really just um, there's not a whole lot more you can say about it um, it doesn't show that there's actually a pair of springs that go from this groove to this groove and this groove to this groove and these washers here just hold it in but that just helps kind of keep everything nice and nice and clean whenever it closes but this is it it's a really simple this is also our prototype uh, we did build it and test it just to kind of prove the theory of it being able to drop the shackle but we have a revision B that I'm designing right now it's gonna have a few more little safety features and a couple minor improvements over things and we're also gonna design a 25 ton 25 metric ton version of this uh, this one is rated for 15 metric tons this is actually an inch and an eighth Crosby uh, 2140 shackle which is an alloy shackle so it, it can lift more than your 2130 so it's rated for 15 metric tons but according to the DMV 2.71 standards the largest max gross weight you can build under that standard is 25 metric tons so we're going to design a hook that size we probably won't build it unless we actually get a uh, a unit that needs it but it'll be ready to go it doesn't take very long to actually produce these it's actually a really simple a lot of most of it is two-dimensional cuts uh, very little machine work involved um, very little welding and so it it lends itself very well to being fabricated 
It's also very compact. I believe that the entire unit by itself only weighs about 40 pounds or so. Um, let me get this shackle showing again. And I believe we were looking here we go, mass properties. Oh, it for some reason it does not like whenever I close it and open it. Yeah, I mean the entire unit weighs a little bit over 45 pounds, about 45 and a half. So it's a lot more compact than most hooks that I've seen. And the alternative hooks are, a lot of them are actually mechanically actuated. One of them actually uses a chain fall type mechanism. So you have to just pull on this chain and pull on this chain and it's, it's kind of unpredictable. Whereas this one, you know that whenever you relieve that hydraulic pressure, that's the instant that it's going to open. And it, it also does it very smoothly. It's kind of a weird word to use for dropping things. But it, it does it very smoothly and predictably. And that's something that you actually want whenever you're doing these tests. Because it gives you, the more control you have over a situation that's pretty much out of control is, is always helpful. But that's about it for this. I'll tag the actual drop test on the end of this video so people can watch it. And I will see y'all next time. Alright guys, well that was the drop test. Um, really sorry if the video was kind of anticlimactic, but that's a good thing in my business is, you know, boring is better because when things are not boring is whenever things are actually going wrong. So, I uh, also couldn't let y'all go without giving a little teaser uh, on one future project that I'm really excited about. Uh, once again, if you follow me on Instagram, you uh, you've already seen kind of part of this this is a Tektronix DM44 and it's normally piggybacked onto a Tektronix um, 465B which is a 100 megahertz uh, CRT oscilloscope which my uncle gave me he way back in the 80s he was really really big in electronics not hobbyist level he was actually an industrial type he developed a lot of systems for a, a bunch of different things but he recently gave me this scope which was his favorite scope it's actually the only one that he had he used to have several but he got rid of them all and he gave me this one and um, the scope itself works fine uh, I did have to change out the fuse in it which is a pretty normal thing and um, that also brings up a good point that whenever we get in this project I'll mention it about those fuses but right now on this multimeter um, the display only shows 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0.3 and we do have a service manual with a kind of troubleshooting flow chart on it and I've looked at it a little bit and the part that the flow chart says to do is doesn't seem to be the issue so we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper into this and I think that this is gonna be a really exciting project I'm also waiting for a, a desoldering vacuum gun to come in because we're gonna have to desolder this IC here and I, I think that that will be the perfect little break-in job for it is to actually 
use it so we'll have kind of a little bit of a review in there and hopefully a repair of this we may also take a look at some of these capacitors but right now we're just going to try to get the display fixed and we'll see where it goes from there but i'm really excited it's a really really awesome oscilloscope it's actually still very popular to this day um on ebay i've kind of looked at them and a lot of them are still going for 175 bucks so this one's not going to get sold because I really want to put it on my bench and actually use it. And I just, I mean, the first time I saw that trace, you, you just, you fall in love with those things. So be on the lookout for this video and I will see y'all next time.